Hi, I'm Tara Garrity, and I am here today with Jackie Nordstrom from Colorado Real Estate Associates. And you've been in business for 10 years in real estate, right? Yes, I have. Now, that is a long time, 10 years. That's a decade. A long time. <laughs> I was joking before. I said, I've been in business 11 years, and when I say that, I think a decade, that is a really long time. But I like Jackie because you're a single mom. Yes. with two kids and I'm a single mom and I think sometimes you know when you're a business owner and you own a business and you're professional in what you do and you're good at what you do but then you're also juggling being a mom being a single mom and then with kids because you have little ones too a five and a yes. seven year old um that's underappreciated it is you know it's very different when you're working from that standpoint so how did you a, a little bit you would tell me you got into real estate you have an interesting story by kind of working for a real estate company yes um I actually got into real estate by accident, I was helping another broker do some mailing and marketing on the side, and I did that for about two years, and I just learned so much. I really was fascinated, you know, by the industry, and also at that point, um, I was at a point to where I wanted to make not only a career change, but also a personal change in my mm -hmm. life, um, getting ready to have a family, and I knew working full-time for someone else just wasn't going to, you know, cut it for me, so... That's when I decided to uh, get my real estate license. Um, I knew that would be a perfect fit for me and my family. I would have the flexibility mm -hmm. to stay home with my little ones, yet remain in the business. Isn't that interesting? That's something that we as women have to think about that men don't have to think about. Absolutely. No man thinks, okay, if I'm going to have kids, how am I going to change my work schedule? And we have to really, that's part of what we have to plan. Yep. So that's and interesting. So now we were talking to you the, with the economy being everybody's very, oh, my gosh, the economy, the housing crisis. Every day, you know, you log into was like Yahoo, and there's something different about the real like, estate market. Ah. <laughs> and is it really as bad as, as we're kind of led to believe by the media? It's not as bad um, as everyone has been led to believe. It can, you know, contrary to what everyone's reading and seeing on the news, it's a great time to buy. I mean, obviously for investors, mm -hmm. um, but also for homeowners who are wanting to sell. So those sellers have an opportunity to maybe upgrade into a larger home that at one time they would never be able to afford. Okay, now my thing, and I, I was asking this, okay, I have a house, I want to sell my house, and we're just hearing a lot of people who got into these upside-down mortgages, and they're owing more than they can get, and now they can't get out of this house. And so you've got, obviously, foreclosure is yes. one option, but you've got three other options, too. And I really had no idea what these were. So can you tell us a little bit about your three other options if you're trying to avoid actually foreclosing? Um, and you said that stays on your credit for five years. Stays on your credit for five years. Um, one of the options that seems to be um, the biggest thing in the market right now is short selling. Okay. And that does give the homeowner an opportunity to sell the property under value, and the lender takes the shortfall. And typically on short sales, uh, there's no type of tax deficiency or income oh, right. responsible by the homeowner. So kind of explain, because I had never heard of a short sale, really. Just That was something very recently I've heard. So explain, kind of give us a scenario of how that would work. Yeah, so typically on a short sale, um, the homeowner bought the property above market value at one time, and now the property values have plummeted, and there is more owed on the note than uh, what the property is worth. And uh, in order for a short sale or for a seller to qualify for a short sale, there has to be three things that have to be present. One is a financial hardship. There has to be little to no equity in the property. And the homeowner has to have um, some type of reasoning with the lender and saying, here's why I need to short sell my property. Okay, so it could be that if I bought my house, let's say three, four years ago, and it was, it's not that I, you know, bought it and made a poor buying decision. It's just now that the market has dropped, my house isn't worth what it was when I bought it. Absolutely, okay. and that is what's happening. So many homeowners aren't uh, late on their note and their current, um, great credit, and the only way for a short sale to be approved is a financial hardship, you have to be late on your mortgage payments, and you have to be upside down on what's owed on the property. So what would be considered a financial hardship? Um, a divorce might be a financial hardship, a death in the family, um, an illness, um, a loss of a job. I was going to say probably a lot of people would qualify that. Absolutely. If you lost a job, that would be huge. Okay. Yep. So there's a way, and then basically the um, agency recoups the difference, and you're not left having to come to the table and owe all this money. Yes, um, absolutely, and that's what the beauty of a short sell is to a homeowner. They There's no way that they're able to afford those payments anymore, okay. and it's almost the property is going back to the bank, and the bank takes the fall for the uh, for the property and for the amount. And, and you so. still do. It does still affect your credit, 
it ne- does. from a negative standpoint, but it's not nearly as bad as oh. actually having to foreclose on a house. So Absolutely. That's huge. Absolutely. In fact, um, if I were in a situation to where I, you know, were in, to where I had to either sell my home or short sell it or go into foreclosure, I absolutely would do a short sell okay. because that foreclosure is just so detrimental. And you're doing a lot of these now, it sounds like. I'm doing so many right now, and I have to tell you, it is just, it is amazing what I'm seeing and hearing from homeowners. It's very touching on their mm-hmm. stories, and everybody, you know, every homeowner, they don't want to lose their home, and it's a matter of pride. But in all fairness, I think the market and how everyone is, is sideways um, financially, you know, they have no other choice, and it's nothing that they've done. Right. So. And you can also do, we, we're, we're not, obviously I have enough time to talk about this, but some other options is we have a loan modification, which you can work with your mortgage company. Yes. But then you can also actually, where you just deed the house back to the bank. Yep. If they're willing to do that, that sometimes is the best option to do. And how do you decide if you're going to do a short sale versus deed the house back? What would be the difference Typically you have to work with a lender and see what they're willing to do. Um, In the short sale, I mostly work with short sales. All my clients ask, um, and it always comes down to where the short sale is their option. Okay. And I would think the bank would rather you do a short sale than they just take would. your they, house back. They have enough houses that have been yeah, foreclosed on. And they don't want another property on their books. Absolutely. So if I'm thinking that this is a way that I want to go, what would be my first step to do that? Um, your first step, absolutely, you must contact a professional um, who knows how to work with short sales. There okay. are so many brokers that I run into who will call me and they know nothing about a short Ooh, sale. Don't talk to those people. It is absolutely scary and okay. frightful. So if you are planning to do a short sale, do some research, make sure the broker you're working with is competent, they're familiar with the process, and they're experienced in what they're doing with those short okay. sales. So your house isn't their first one to get their experience. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Absolutely not. And that is that is absolutely the worst thing that a um, seller can do. Okay. Well, thank you so much for thank being you. with us I today. And it. You can contact Jackie at the information uh, listed below. And thank you for stopping by. We will see you next week. Thank you.